One of the most talked about solution to global warming, renewable energy, have been continuously blooming in every country, from large power plant installations to small scale systems in households. So what is ARI, and how does it plan to help the Philippines transition the power industry to a cleaner and more sustainable future? Hello, this is Jay, and welcome in another explainer video of Energy Intel PH. In today's video, we will be discussing about an overview of the Philippine renewable energy industry. Renewable energy is energy from sources that are continually replenished by nature, the sun, the wind, water, the earth's heat, plants and even animals. Renewable energy technologies turn these resources into usable forms of energy, most often electricity, but also heat, chemicals, or mechanical power. Renewable energy sources is commonly categorized as a cleaner, non-polluting, and a more sustainable source of energy. There are different types of renewable energy sources. We have biomass, geothermal, solar, hydro, ocean, and wind. The Department of Energy has dubbed these different sources as Big Show. Biomass energy systems refer to energy systems which uses biomass resources, like sugarcane, coconut husks and shells, rice hull, animal and other equi-west, to produce heat, steam, mechanical power or electricity through either thermochemical, biochemical or physicochemical processes, or through such other technologies. Geothermal energy systems refer to systems that converts geothermal energy, which is the energy that can be extracted from the heat in the earth, into useful power. In this system, cool water is injected to the ground, then hot water is pumped up and heat is used to produce steam which is used to turn turbines of generators, thus producing electricity. Solar energy systems refer to systems which convert solar energy into thermal or electrical energy. This can be classified as ground-mounted solar, rooftop solar, or floating solar, among others. Hydroelectric power systems refer to water-based energy systems which produce electricity by utilizing the kinetic energy of falling, or running water to turn a turbine generator. Ocean energy systems refer to energy systems which convert ocean or tidal current, ocean thermal gradient or wave energy into electrical or mechanical energy. Wind energy systems refer to the machines, or other related equipment that convert wind energy into useful electrical or mechanical energy. Let's now talk about the development of renewable energy in the Philippines. Renewable energy has long been part of the energy industry, but its development bolstered during the enactment of the Renewable Energy Act of 2008. With the RE law, the following policies of the state was put in place, among others. First is to accelerate the exploration and development of renewable energy resources in order to achieve energy self-reliance so that we can reduce the country's dependence on fossil fuels and minimize the country's exposure to price fluctuations. Second is to effectively prevent or reduce harmful emissions and thereby balance the goals of economic growth and development with the protection of health and the environment. And lastly, to increase the utilization of RE by providing fiscal and non-fiscal incentives. Now let's talk about some of the incentives under the RE law. For the fiscal incentives, we have tax-related incentives, exemption from universal charge on some systems, and cash incentives, among others. For non-fiscal incentives, we have the feed-in tariff which sets a fixed price for the sale or purchase of one unit of renewable electricity. The costs of this feed-in tariff scheme were covered by end-users through a surcharge on retail power prices. Next, we have the net metering program, that allows end-users with an on-site RE facility, not larger than 100 kilowatts to feed excess power back to the grid and be credited. These credits can then be used by the customer to offset power they purchase from the utility at a future time, when they consume more than they can generate. Then, we have the Renewable Portfolio Standards which requires certain energy participants like distribution utilities, retail electricity suppliers, and even some generating companies to source an agreed portion of their energy supply from eligible renewable energy facilities. This market-based policy aims to help increase RE utilization of about 35% in the generation mix by 2030. 
And lastly, we have the Green Energy Option Program which shall allow end users of a certain demand to secure, contract and source their supply directly with a renewable energy supplier. Now, for the current status of the RE industry. In 2019, RE represents about 21% of the Philippine generation mix, with an installed capacity of 7.4 gigawatts and 22 terawatt hours energy generation. Further, during previous forums and public consultations held, NREBA and the DOE have stated that they are already shifting from a grid-centered approach to a consumer-centered use of the RE systems. They plan to increase the participation of the consumers in the RE industry by increasing awareness for RE programs, facilitating access to RE supply, and engaging the regulator in developing consumer enabler and market unlocking programs, among others. With the continuous implementation of the RE law and its programs, we hope to further increase the share of renewable energy in the Philippines and achieve the target of 35% in the generation mix by 2030 or even earlier. Thank you for watching. See you on my next video. Visit my page at Energy Intel PH.